Okay, uh, hi, my name is Aidila. I'm a special reports editor at Malaysia Kini. What that means is that I try to explore topics that are beyond your usual daily headlines. Last Madeka, we published this uh, report. What it is, is a report that tries to use data to explore how Malaysian children are now growing up in uh, ethnic and class bubbles and what it means for our future together. I'm here today to tell you about how that report came to be. So, Usually, I uh, introduce myself as a data investigative journalist, so I use data to investigate issues. Uh, our story starts with this piece of data. So I found that in 2011, 91% of uh, Sekolah Rendah Kebangsaan students are Bumi Putra. Uh, I found that really surprising because it didn't gel with my memory of national school. I'm a proud uh, product of national school, so that's me. Uh, and you can see that in my class, my class is not 91% Bumi Putra. But at the same time, I grew up in Kuala Lumpur. Uh, I'm an urban child, so maybe my experience is not the same as you mentioned. But that piece of data also reminded me of a conversation I had with my colleague. Ten years ago, he enrolled his son in this school, St. John's Institution, a public school right smack in KL. And in his class, there was only one student, uh, in his son's class, there was only one student who's not Malay. And this was so different from when he was a St. John's student many years ago. So, this is how I started investigating the mystery of the missing non-Malay children in national schools. I thought I can just write to the education ministry and then ask them for enrollment data in terms of ethnicity. But obviously, they had a different idea. They believe that the data is too late, which means it's confidential. So I went on a hunt for data for a few months. I had to talk to researchers. I had to talk to bureaucrats, uh, politicians, anyone that I could like back for data. I had to spend lots of time in government libraries and open uh, research reports that probably were not, would not have, were not open for the past decade. So this is what I came up with after a few months. It's not the line chart that I env envisaged when I first started this project, when I thought it was easy. It also doesn't answer whether my, my class earlier uh, was an anomaly, but it, all, it shows that uh, in the past 20 years or so, Sekolah Rendah Kebangsaan is becoming more mono-ethnic and becoming basically almost 100% booby. Uh, this is Anita and her family. Anita's a bit older than me. She grew up in the 80s. Uh, she grew up in an estate, so all her neighbours were Indian like her. Um, but like me, she went to national school. So she has friends and had friends from various uh, backgrounds. Her daughters do not go to national school and her daughters don't have a single Malay friend. So, if uh, non-Malay kids don't go to national school, where do they go? Uh, in 2011, again, 96% of Chinese parents say that they send their kids to SJKC, which is your primary vernacular school. Uh, today, the number is closer to 99%, which means that practically everyone sends their kids to Chinese schools. Um, the reasons are complex. Uh, it ranges from the importance of Mandarin in this world today. Uh, there's also a fear of Islamization in national school. There's also a perceived quality of education issue. I feel that those reasons are rational, but at the same time, when Chinese children disappear in great numbers from national schools, it leaves an impact to other people. Uh, this is Anita's eldest daughter, Azrila, when she was in primary school. She was enrolled in SK Puchong, which uh, in Senate One, and it was a national school. Uh, Puchong is a Chinese uh, area, so her parents really didn't expect that she was the only non-Malay and non-Muslim in her Senate One class. It meant that she had to go to Agama school, uh, Agama class, with everyone else, and her parents were uncomfortable, so they pulled her out and put her in SJKC. This is how our education system really looks like the national, uh, the public system. It's by design, actually. The segregation in primary school is to kind of uh, preserve our cultural heritage, and everyone is supposed to go to SMK. Uh, actually, when you look at the enrollment data for SMK, uh, the plan is actually working people are actually going into SMK and becoming, you know, joining this mainstream in SMK because 72% is women putra, 30% are all these children who went to vernacular, etc., and going to SMK. But when you look at the data deeper and wider, actually thousands of Malay children are opting out of SMK. They are going to your Bumi only and Muslim only schools like Asrama or uh, Agama schools. And the number is actually four times bigger than the Chinese children who are out of SMK. So, in pr uh, at the same time, we also have uh, changes in policy in private education. Uh, what this means is that there are more private schools, and Malaysians can go to public, pub private schools. And in the past 10 years, uh, the enrollment in secondary private grew five times, actually by five folds. And uh, 
public education shrank by 12%. So the answer we have to ask is, so what? So what if this happens? The first part, the private education, I think is obvious. That's a class divide. But so what if Malay children want to join Muslim-only schools, go to Sekolah Agama and go to Sekolah Asrama? What does that mean to our nation? We, the, the, the answer for that actually lies in a study that was run in 2018. I'm very sad to say that this study found that Malays, uh, compared to other people in Malaysia, view other races um, less favorably compared to vice versa. They're also less inclined to learn about other religions. So when a Malay child goes to a school in that kind of environment for 12 years, they kind of, uh, these attitudes become entrenched. So things get a bit difficult for them to interact with others, for others to interact with them. And then we get situations where we cannot live with each other, can't even do the simplest things like sharing an office pantry or going for lunch, which is what we're starting to find in studies currently about working adults. Uh, I have thrown a lot of numbers at you actually, but this story is not about numbers. The story is about children, children like Azrila, that's her now. Uh, children like these guys, families, uh, students, you and me, it's our story as a nation together. It's really not about the numbers, it's about how we live together as Malaysians and how we will overcome that. As me, surrounded by uh, my Dulang girls, who are people that I know from Sekolah Rendah all the way to my adulthood, and they are people of different colours. And I feel that I have had the privilege to make this to people from various backgrounds, and I really fear that these Malaysian uh, friendships are disappearing and going extinct. But at the same time, I also hope that I am completely wrong. Thank you.